Are you looking for a new technique to add to your photography toolbox that will wow your clients, impress your friends, and make your other photographer buddies jealous? Well, enter the Bokeh Panorama. What's up guys, Reggie B Photo here and welcome back to the channel. So for those of you who are new, my name is Reggie Ballesteros and I'm a wedding photographer based in the San Francisco Bay Area. In this video, I'm going to teach you guys step by step how to set up, compose, shoot, and edit your own bokeh panorama using the Brenizer method. So what exactly is the Brenizer method or a bokeh panorama shot? Well, opposed to landscape photography where you stitch together a lot of shots to get a very deep and wide scene, the Brenizer method or bokeh panorama is a little different in the sense that you're stitching together photos to create an image with shallow depth of field and a very compressed look but at the same time still have a wide field of view. And this method was made popular by a wedding photographer by the name of Ryan Brenizer, hence the term Brenizer method. Ultimately, this technique results in what people describe as a cinematic, an anamorphic, or wide aspect ratio type of shot that you couldn't really achieve with a single lens. And this technique seems to work best for portraits and fairly static scenes like wedding ceremonies. If there's a lot of motion in the scene or the shot, you do run the risk of ghosting or someone or something being duplicated multiple times inside of the frame. So now that we know what a bokeh panorama is, let's talk about the gear and settings we need to pull this technique off successfully. So as far as gear goes, telephoto lenses tend to work best. I prefer a full frame equivalent of the 85mm focal length or longer. So in my case, since I shoot a crop sensor Fuji camera, my focal length of choice is 56mm due to the 1.5 crop factor of the Fujifilm cameras. And telephoto lenses work better because they have less distortion which helps create a cleaner panorama overall once everything is stitched together. On the other hand, using wider lenses can create weird effects at the seams where two images meet due to clashing distortion. And while it's not required, it does help to have a telephoto lens with a larger aperture. Again, it's called a bokeh panorama. So the larger the aperture, the shallower depth of field we can achieve and the more pronounced the effect will be. And the Fujifilm 56mm Prime has a large 1.2 aperture, which translates to about a 1.8 aperture on full frame. And this is perfect for creating bokeh panoramas with Fujifilm cameras. But this is just my preference and you can create a bokeh panorama using the Brenizer method with any camera system. So now on to the settings. First and foremost, for still images, I always recommend shooting in RAW, as it gives the most amount of dynamic range and flexibility for editing in post, as opposed to JPEG images. Since we're going to take multiple shots, it's very important that the exposure, tone, and color settings stay consistent across all the panorama frames that you take. So what this means is manual exposure settings is very important and if you shoot JPEGs, locking in your picture profile and the white balance is also very key. For the exposure, you're going to want to shoot with the aperture wide open or as close to wide open as you feel comfortable with. And for shutter speed, the proper shutter speed to freeze your subject, even for static portraits like this, is 1 over 2 50th of a second or faster, depending on the light levels of your scene. For the ISO, keep this as low as you can to maximize the dynamic range of your shot and minimize the noise levels. But be sure not to underexpose the photo too much if you don't have to. As far as white balance goes, I personally keep this in auto because I shoot in raw with the plans to adjust the white balance in post, but you're going to want to manually set or lock the white balance if you're shooting JPEGs. So now onto the actual execution of the Brenizer method. First, we're going to compose our shot in the vertical orientation. Typically, the first shot that you take is going to be the center, and if we do it in the vertical orientation, it allows us to get all of our subject in the frame in one shot. And even though this technique has some really cool effect to it, in general, good photo fundamentals are still required here. So you want to make sure that your composition, lighting, and posing are still good in sound, as this is applicable to any photo. Once you have your composition, you're going to want to dial in your exposure and white balance and then lock those settings. From there, acquire your focus on the subject using autofocus single. Once it's acquired, carefully switch your camera or lens into manual focus or use the autofocus lock setting on your camera. Locking your focus is crucial as it ensures that all the frames in your panorama will have a consistent plane of focus and consistent autofocus elements, aka bokeh. Now it's time to take the first shot of your subject. Once you take that initial shot of your subject, systematically move to the left or the right. And take the shot leaving a little bit of overlap, maybe like a third of the frame. 
This overlap is to allow Lightroom to have some context to relate the photos together for stitching. Go over to the right as much as you need to. The more shots, the more pronounced the effect, but also the more shots that you take, the larger the file size is of the overall panorama. And once you've went all the way to the right as much as you wanted to, move back and go to the left of the couple mirroring the process. From there, you're gonna wanna go up and across. And then you want to go down, go across the opposite way, finishing up the panorama. And then I'm going to show it to you guys again in a different angle. Again, moving to the right first. And then we're going to go over to the left. Then up and back across to the right. and then going down and back across to the left to finish up the panorama. So that wraps it up for the shooting part. Next we're gonna... So as always, the first step is to import the photos into Lightroom. From there, we're gonna navigate to the folder that you imported the photos to, select all the photos from the panorama sequence, and then right click it, select photo merge, and then select panorama. This is going to open up another window where you can preview the final stitch product as well as tweak the distortion profiles of the panorama, the auto crop settings, etc. Going to choose these settings right here. It looks good and say OK. And now this is going to take some time depending on how powerful your computer is. And now that that's done stitching, you'll notice that Lightroom spits out a DNG file, which is a raw file. And this is awesome because you have all the flexibility of the raw format, which is exposure, flexibility, dynamic range, and adjustable white balance, even on this crazy 21 photo stitch panorama. So now here, I'm going to edit the photo to my liking. If you want to see how I use graduated filters in Lightroom to mold the light on this particular image, let me know down in the comments, but we'll save that explanation for another video. And then boom, that's it. And here is the final image. So now you know how to execute the Brandizer method and create a bokeh panorama from start to finish. Now I challenge you guys to go out and create your own bokeh panorama shots, whether it be a wedding, your next portrait session, or just practicing at home. And to encourage you guys, please share your bokeh panorama shots on Instagram and tag me at photo in the photo and I'll do my best to give you some feedback on your bokeh panorama shots. If you learned something from this tutorial, please give it a like and leave a comment down below if you have any questions. As always, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I post a new Fuji film or photography video every week. But if that's too long for you, be sure to follow me on Instagram at, at photo as I'm always posting new little tutorials, tips, and tricks throughout the week. Alright, that's it for me. Remember to get out, go shoot, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.